Hi friends, it's Monica and today I'm going to be wrapping up the books I read in January. So I actually read 8 books in January but I did DNF one so I'm counting it as 7 books read but let's just get into it and see what I, books I loved or which books I didn't like. The first book I read was Treading Stars by Micheline Reichman and I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This one's described as a YA fantasy adventure and this was a book that I just needed to start 2022 off as a lighter fantasy. We're following Talia Benson who one day wakes up in a field and she discovers she's in a new fantastical world known as the Nine Realm. She is charming and ordinary and she embraces who she is which is enjoying drawing, gazing at the stars, and enjoying a good cup of coffee. And the only thing that she misses from Earth is her mother and her cats. And now in this new fantastical world, Talia shows how an ordinary girl can actually be quite powerful. We also get a second perspective in the book which is Talia's love interest, Jarrett, and with their relationship it's really slow and I really liked the nuances of the slow buildup of realizing that you have a crush on someone and that was really nice to read about. My favorite part of the book were the attuned animals which are animals that have a certain attachment to a person and basically are familiars and I really enjoyed Jared's attuned animal QB which is a really cute and fluffy and really sassy squirrel. With the adventure in the Nine Realms, we have a whole cast of characters that have their own unique backstories and it was really fun to see this group of unusual characters meet each other. All in all, Tali and Jarrett learn important lessons and discover to overcome their fears. I really enjoyed that charting stars was a fun and refreshing fantasy for me so I really like this one. The next book I read was my first five-star read of the year and that was Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Um, I read this one really quickly because it has really short chapters and the premise of being able to choose another life propelled me to keep on reading. The Midnight Library takes place in a library between life and death. In this library, the shelves are never ending and each book contains a life of what if you chose differently than your current reality. So your decision now in the book with our character Nora, would you continue to live your current reality or choose to live one of the lives you could have had? Like I said, we have our main character Nora who is actually facing this decision throughout the book and Nora is exploring the decision she has regretted. I haven't read many magical realism books but this one was quite easy to get into and I really enjoyed the concept of course. The messages in the book were straightforward but it doesn't discount how powerful they are of living your life without regrets and also just take the risk when you have the chance to take the risk. And another important lesson from this book I learned was live your life without pursuing dreams that belong to someone else. So just live your own life with your own decisions and pursuing your dreams. In conclusion, I absolutely love this book and highly recommend it. So this next book did not really work out for me and I ended up DNFing it and this was broken in the best way possible by Jenny Lawson. So personally, I am not an active follower of Jenny Lawson who is an American journalist and blogger so with her memoir I was not used to her style of writing so it did not mesh well with me. I made through like maybe four or five of the short essays that were in the book but um, I just didn't like how it was written <laughs> overall. I was hoping for more like the lighthearted insights of Jenny's story through her depression and other health problems that she has in her life but in the end, I couldn't connect with her as I hoped I would. Anyways, moving on to another disappointing read and which was my first contemporary of the year and this was An Abundance of Catherine by John Green. This one I rated a 2 out of 5 stars and with John Green books, they were either a hit or a miss for me and with An Abundance of Catherine's, it was unfortunately a miss for me. So this one follows Colin who goes on a road trip with his best friend to, to prove his theorem about when relationships end. Since he has poor relationship experience while being dumped by 19 girls with the same name of Catherine. So the type of humor in this book was one that I didn't really connect with and didn't make me laugh out loud that I wanted to. And John Green does this smart humor really well and it just unfortunately did not match my personal taste of humor. It was kind of hard for me to read through like the long dialogues and footnotes and the characters that I didn't like. <laughs> Compared to other John Green books, I've read like The Fault in Our Stars or Looking for Alaska. 
um, this one lacked the emotional sentiment that I was looking forward to. And as I mentioned before, this book does talk about a theorem, so with math, I really don't like math talk or anything about that, but I had hope for more and to be fully invested in this story, but it didn't turn out that way. So moving on. This next book is an atmospheric fantasy inspired by Persian mythology and this is this Woven Kingdom by Tahira Mafi and I rated this one a 3.75 out of 5 stars. We're following two characters. We have the protagonist, Eliza, who is a servant but she's hiding because she's a secret jinn queen. And we also have another perspective, Cameron, who is the human crown prince. Starting off with what I liked about this book was the characters. Eliza is no simpleton, she's educated, she's sharp and she has a heart willing to help others. When she figures out she has a part to play within a prophecy, there is assassin sent after her, which she handles quite well because she has gen abilities, which include super strength, invisibility, and her eyes also shift colors. Cameron was also a nice POV to read from. Um, although he might be blinded by his privilege, he still wants to do good for his people. And at the same time, he's combating against his king grandfather's rule. And of course, Cameron is drawn to Elisa and how mysterious she is. However, on the flip side of this book, the world was very immersive, but for me, it felt like the writing was too lush. It ended up with really slow pacing and until we reached the explosive ending, so I was just kind of just trying to get through all the slower parts, but that what made me bring down the rating like a star or so. And I usually really do love Tarahira Mafi's style of writing, but with this particular romance fantasy, it reads as a romance fantasy and I was just hoping for more action overall and we do get a lot of politics and understanding this new world in general I was hoping for more movement within the plot itself so I hope in the sequel of the, this woven kingdom that, that we have better pacing and we have more character development next up I read another fantasy book and this is The Storm of Echoes by Christelle Dabol this was the fourth and final book in the Mirror Visitor series and I rated this one a 3 out of 5 stars this series was originally written in French but it is translated into English so in book 1, A Winter's Promise we learn about a cataclysmic event called the Rapture that broke the earth up into large floating chunks known as arcs and on each arc there is a ruling family that has unique magical abilities. We follow Ophelia and Thorn as our main characters. They are also placed into an arranged marriage and we follow their adventures throughout the different arcs. Now on to my thoughts on Storm of Echoes. Coming back into the world of Ophelia and Thorn, I thought we were going to go on to a fantasy adventure to solve the major problems and discover the secrets within this entire book series. Unfortunately, that's where this final book fell short for me. Now, after growing closer, our married couple, uh, Ophelia and Thor, and they are on the hunt to find whoever is mysteriously destroying the arcs. What I did like about the series and throughout all the books were the highlights of the class differences and class struggles, as well as the different political scheming, and of course, a great character growth. We see Ophelia grow out of her shell and become more courageous and are not afraid to speak up and while Thorn, his usual cool demeanor, we get to learn more about his caring side. The Mirror Visitor series is not your typical YA fantasy series, so I did appreciate its originality. And another issue I had with this book was the slow and drawing pacing. It just felt like the prose was more focused on philosophy rather than the movement of the plot, so I kind of felt really slow and different from the first three books. Also, the ending was really bittersweet for a couple, so I did not appreciate that ending since like with fantasy books or anything, I always hope for the best ending, but with this series, it did not end as I wanted it to end. We do receive answers of what the huge mystery is and how our characters help to resolve that issue of the world. In Storm of Echoes, the writing seemed to have changed a little bit, and that made my reading experience quite difficult to follow the storylines. But I did still love Ophelia and Thorn and all the other side characters we meet along the way. I just wanted a little bit more from the finale. So I wanted to switch it up with my next books that I read with thrillers instead of fantasy books. So I picked up The Maintenance by Alex Michaelides. 
and I rated this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The Mutants is about Mariana, who is a group therapist and becomes fixated on solving a murder of a friend of her niece, Zoe, and this takes place at Cambridge University. And Mariana, our protagonist, just knows in her gut that Edward Fosca, who is a professor in Greek tragedy at the university, is the murderer. Going into this book, the thought of mixing Greek mythology, psychology, as well as murder mysteries seems like a really great mix. I actually did uh, read this book on audiobook and the narrator did a great job at getting past the slower points in the book. I did enjoy the Greek mythology that was interspersed throughout the clues that we find out with um, our main character. And I was actually fooled by some red herrings, so that was a great part of the book and with thrillers, I just really want to be surprised. So the issues I had with this book was with Mariana, who is a psychotherapist, but then she then psychoanalyzes everyone and everything, so it was a little bit hard to connect with her. And I also felt some side characters were just added in for potential suspects, so I didn't really care much for the side characters. I wanted to experience big twists and turns, and the maidens did deliver on that but I just wanted something more from the ending. So the last book I managed to squeeze in at the end of the month was The Cousins by Karen M. McManus, and I rated this one a 3 out of 5 stars. So this author is known for YA thrillers, and I've read her previous books, and I really enjoyed them. The Cousins is a bit different from her previous books in that it reads more of a YA contemporary mystery rather than a YA thriller. That was what I was expecting going into it. So the cousins revolves around a huge mystery around a wealthy family. I struggled to get past the first half of this book until some secrets were revealed. So we're following three cousins who don't really know each other that well, but they all receive a invitation. They are all invited to work at an island resort that their grandmother owns. And each of these cousins' parents all encourage them to accept the invitation in order to get back into their grandmother's good graces. With a rich family, they have really deep secrets and they are uncovered by the end of the book. I was surprised at the reveals, but to get to the point, the pacing was really slow. I'm seeing a common theme among all the low-rated books this month, and that's I just don't like slow pacing. But personally, pacing is very important, and I guess as soon as I get past slow pacing and the book picks up and it really depends if I'm attached to the characters or not. I wish there was more action like um, Karen and McManus' previous books, but I like the overall mystery we got from the cousins. So those were all the books I read in January and it started off well. The month started off strong and then it slowly went downhill, but I'm hoping for February I will read more books and I will still be continuing my bi-monthly TBRs. I think January is an outlier month for reading so many books that I did. Thank you so much for watching. Comment down below a favorite of yours from last month. Don't forget to give me a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button down below, and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see you all soon.